part two of this system install for our solar thermal system will be actually how do we get the solar thermal transfer fluid from the collectors back to our system. So if we do a roof mount here, we need to put two more additional penetrations through the roof to get ourselves the fluid that's coming in. One from the collector and run from the pump. So the return, call that the hot and cold side, but really there's nothing cold about it. Now there's some tricks of the trade that we like to do. If we're dealing with an asphalt roof, what we're going to use is a drill and drill in the center of the shingle for where the location is going to go. Now there are a few products out there and this video is going to change obviously with time and the products that are out there for solar thermal installed changes over time but generally speaking you try to keep if at all possible a nice square straight line run from the collector into the roof and run from the inlet the pump side to the collector when you penetrate through nice square straight lines as well so try to think your way through it first and the other mechanism that you need to think about is depending upon where you're at on the roof where you want to take your solar thermal up at generally you don't want to be down towards the eave side that'll make your installation far more difficult. That may be your only source, but if you can plan ahead where you want to install this lines at will make your life easier later on. So the game of solar thermal is a game of strategery determining where you want to mount the panels, where you want the penetrations to go, and where you want your balance of system as it were for the pumps and the check valves and the filling portions of it as well. So there's a lot of intuitive, I don't even know if that's the right word, but but you really need to be thinking what is the most intuitive locations that a homeowner can distinguish, okay, this is where my system's at, this is where the collectors are, this is the best fit for everything, and that sort of deal. So these are some points. Why did we drill in the center of the shingle? Let's show a picture of the flashing first. This is a copper flashing. It's got copper flashing and it's got the diameter of the pipe that we're going to put in. So by going into the center right here of the shingle, the flashing internally is going to sit there and that'll keep that water from penetrating through. And then what we'll do is once we get that through, when we penetrate through, then we can seal that up again tight with a variety of methods. Again, notice screwdriver, gentle lifting. We don't want to rip or tear. So this is going to be very difficult. Older tabs will tend to go loose and break more off. Notice that he's using a permethane based uh, seal and he does a horseshoe shape. You don't want to do a square shape and the reason for that is this portion right here is going to go right here. So the horseshoe permethane seal is this way. That way if there's any water we're going to want it to weep around and anything that might get in here has a chance to get out. We want a little bit of potential breather. Rain's not going to flow up this way into it. That will never happen. Rain will come down and we want it to go around. So that's why when you see the caulking you want to do a horseshoe shape. You want to gently lift that shingle. You want to slide that flashing underneath the shingle and then I want to gently press down. You don't want to hammer that shingle down. You want to just use your hands to press that shingle down. Now, once you put your copper in, then you're going to put your flashing cap on, and then you're going to sweat solder that on there. I'll have a video later on sweat soldering, but the premise here is the following. So piping will be soldered to the top of the flashing cap. That'll be up here. So we're going to run this down. So there will not be a mechanical connection. This will just be a watertight connection. Now, one thing that I've learned over the years when I do my sweat soldering is I eyeball where that pipe is going to run through this system and then I take a bit of a sandpaper and I scratch and rough up make it nice and bright where it's going to meet your flashing cap. That way when I'm on the roof, I don't have to worry about all the varieties of cleaning and all that. I can just put a thin layer of flux on there, sweat solder it, and then move to my next solder joint. And so now you can kind of see what's going on. Sometimes we may need to bring an electrical wire down. That's the sensing wire for the temperature. And notice this U-shape right here that the wire will go in and keep the water from going in. So these are just some overliers that we want to be aware of. Biggest thing that we have with PV and solar thermal systems by putting them on the roof is water getting into the house. You want to take extreme care at this point. It's kind of a gorilla type of operation. You're really tugging, pulling, trying to get stuff through and we're going to have to be firm but we want to try to mitigate any tears, cracking, and destroying of the shingles as we're putting the install in.